Hello and welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and as usual, I'm not here alone. I've got Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye and Ewa Oritu. Hey guys. Good morning. <laughs> How are you Very doing? Wet morning. Yes, it is a wet morning. Like, that really wet. Right. But, I mean, <laughs> those who are in this area understand the wetness. Mm. Mm. Anyway, um, I mean, let's... Say, uh, um, I don't get the wetness. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving on real quick and not focusing on Ife. Um, a police officer, I think we have to create a segment on Tea Time now that will become the segment to talk about police brutality because it seems we have to talk about them like almost every, every day, day, right? Mm. Anyway, um, I.D. Kabasa comes out to narrate um, horrible experience. He says the police officer slapped him. Now, from what he narrated, he was in a... I, say, I think he said Uber, Uber. right? Mm. And... His um, Uber driver was being intimidated by a guy driving a range, right? And <sighs> now I, I, I think this, not, this story is not just about the policeman now. It's about how we also treat ourselves as human beings. Because mm. if from, I mean, this is a one-sided story anyway, but if from what he's saying, you are at fault. Why would you want to intimidate this guy? Because you feel you have the money or you have the power or you have... A bigger car and then you call the police people and the police are supposed to be your friend right they're supposed to come and say okay guy, you cannot do this to this you're right you're not right now decides to intimidate the uber guy because i don't know because whatever it is but mm. it's just a sad story and at least he received one slap before they realized that he's id kabasa or something <laughs> it's not a palatable story mm. oh go ahead okay um i mean I don't know what to say because we, we always talk about police brutality mm -hmm. on this table. And to be honest, I'm even tired. It's like we we'll ju we'll just keep talking and nothing's even happening. If it's just every day we keep hearing different stories and nothing is just happening, nobody's saying anything, nobody's addressing the issue. And I feel like when celebrities start getting the shell, the <laughs> cake too, like one one slap every day from different celebrities, they will come out and now they will know that it's not just about the poor. Now is affecting everybody. We are all caught in this, and we are all stuck in it. So if we all don't come together and raise our voice against police brutality, it's going to touch everybody, even from the poor to the rich, and it's already happening. So I think again, the police first force needs to come and answer this and do something about it. I mean, you can't be kept in a place to protect. He said the policeman was supposed to be protecting maybe a lounge or something like that, and you're now being used against civilians that you're supposed to protect. It's very bad. And I think something needs to be done Im immediately. Even five, five slaps for each celebrity daily will not change anything. You want to know why? Because um, until the police and um, the force reformation is actually put in place, where you actually employ people that are actually qualified to be police officers, that mm. you check their mental health status, Train them you, properly. Check that, you check their um, emotional health status, because some of them are not just acting out of the fact that they're carrying on. Some of them are mentally imbalanced, like ID Kabasa pointed out. Some of them do not even have the mental capacity to carry a gun. Some of them are troubled by financial issues, by um, matrimonial issues, by having kids, by having that. By... So a background check to everybody you are putting in the police force is what is actually necessary. Now, we have a lot of... Um, SSC holders that are police officers. We have a lot of GC holders that are police officers. We have a lot of secondary school um, certificate holders that are police officers. We don't even have the qualified people. Some of those police officers, for all you care, did not even go to the police academy. But they are police officers because they need a job. Lack of um, manpower. Everybody employs anyone and everyone that comes to seek for a job. We need more police officers. You just sign papers. You just say, oh, they do one week training, and then you put somebody in power. You give them a gun. You give them a right to do this. You give them a right to do that. So I think proper reformation, proper training is what we should be advocating for and not even um, saying that celebrities should be slapped. Because no matter how... No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. You're going to go on. You're going just, to go on. But let me just correct that. Just calm. That. Don't correct that. 
No, no, I need to correct, correct this that because you're taking her out of context. Yeah, let her correct. You are. Okay, let her correct what she has said. Calm, calm, down. Down. Said, calm down. I'm not taking you out of context because you if you let me land, you will know I'm not taking you out of context. I don't need to let you land. You've already okay. made like two right. points, and you're taking me out of context. And okay. I'm not saying be in context. Go and, I'm not saying go and slap celebrities. What I'm saying is that I mean we've had so many social issues. That is when um, celebrities start speaking out, and that is when the necessary authorities start reacting. Mm -hmm. If it's left to other people there that don't have voice, that all we can just do is talk about it. I mean, I'm not talking about us. I mean, ordinary people out there that are being victimized every day, but they don't have a voice out there. If all these celebrities should come out, and the way they are standing with the rape issue, women violence, they should stand with this police brutality too. And at the end of the day, well, I'm sure that the right authority, by the time we put them on their toes, the right thing will be done. I'm not saying that don't train the police or don't do this, don't do that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if everybody can come together and I have one voice, one voice against mm. this thing, it will work out. Because if we don't push our authorities to do what is right, you think they don't know that all these police are supposed to go to school or they're supposed to do this. They, they know what is right. It's just that they are not doing it. That mm. If we don't put them on their toes, nothing will be done. Okay, so um, I guess I get where you're coming from. But for me, I don't even think it's a case of um, being a secondary school holder or a GSE holder. I mean, what is the certificate of our president and what were we dragging for? In the law, you don't even need to be a BSc holder to be a president of Nigeria. All you require is to at least have gone to secondary school and mm. passed, right? So I think from what he said, it's a case of really reforming the police academy when they get into the academy because i really don't want to believe that anybody goes into the police force without going through the academy and the question now is how do you train these people what kind of training do they undergo what kind of environment do they do you put them into training them what have you told them their job is and when you told them this is their job did they understand the capacity and the responsibility that falls on their shoulders as um members of the police force you know so i think it's 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 a very dicey case and um Yes, um, the influence the celebrities have cannot be underestimated. So if there is any issue, and we have, even if it's just five of them, mm -hmm. come together to say we are marching forward, we need a reformation in this segment, they would be listened to because they, they have that level of influence. And you're so, not following on the issue of reformation because if you're following on the issue of reformation, you would know that a lot of celebrities have been out for reformation of the police force and yet nothing has been done. So now it's not about calling out the problem. That's like stating the obvious. Now what should be done? No, what should I'm not saying yeah. nobody has said anything. It's still a case of okay, look at what happened with Shawari and the revolution. Unfortunately it did not go on. But there need to be a unity in that calling out. Now I wake up tomorrow, I, I'm not calling anybody's name because they've done anything, I'm just making an example. Mm -hmm. So I wake up tomorrow, I'm a two-faced, I put out something, people talk about it, it's gone. And then the next four weeks, a Paul Okoye puts out something, I'll talk about it, and it's gone. And then the next five weeks, like, if we can come together with one and voice to say this is what we want done, I think it will be more effective. I'm not saying these people I mentioned now must do it, but I'm hoping that we get to that point where I'm we have people that can I'm going to make reference to that, um, thing. when a lot of celebrities, when Kolade died, a lot of celebrities put their voice together. At the same time, it wasn't four weeks later, it wasn't a week later, it wasn't two days later. At the same time, a lot of celebrities called for the reformation of SARS and the police force and forces in general. General. Mm -hmm. Was anything done? What but they were calling for is for justice for Kola. Well, justice not, was done. Yes. What were you talking about? Justice, <laughs> justice, justice was done. Don't get it okay, twisted. So what justice was done? Please explain oh, to me. You probably okay, now you need to follow, go back yeah, and go check and follow the, the case. Story. Anyway, we need to move right. on to the next story, though, because once it comes to Nigerian issue, it's always um, hectic. But moving on, um, Nick Carter has been granted a temporary restraining order against younger brother Aaron after alleging he threatened to kill Nick's pregnant wife. The singer said the legal move came in light of Aaron's increasingly alarming behavior. Aaron must now stay at least 100 feet away from Nick, his family, and their Las Vegas home. In response, Aaron Carter um, said he was astounded by the accusation, and he went on to say, I do not wish harm to anyone, especially my family. So, I mean, like if I usually say, when it comes to family matter, it's, uh, it's dicey to interfere, but mm. it's also heartbreaking when um, family issues cannot be settled inside and then it has to go to the court and all that. But it is what it is. I'm not going to say it's wrong to go to court and all that. If there is an issue and that's the only way you think you can get help or get it solved or at least be safe, then I mean, it's, it's a legal option for you to follow. But 
I wish they find peace. And um, Aaron has come on Twitter to say, I think he's saying he's done with them, yeah, he has that not this seen is the height. In four years and it was not after plan of yeah. seeing him. Mm -hmm. But um, from what I read also, I think they were saying this off the back of the interview he granted on a particular show where he talked about his mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And he has also come out to say that the, the show was edited or something. And then the owners of the show are saying, no, he wasn't edited. So, um, if he had, if he has um, if, uh, mental health issues, he should probably get the right help. I mean, you're in an environment where I think according people... to the show, it's bipolar. <laughs> uh, no, no, bipolar wasn't mentioned, but there's so many other mental health issues that was mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't think um, restraining other can actually keep you safe from somebody that is mentally ill, mm. to be honest. Mm. Because they really don't care. If you don't want to hurt, hurt someone, it has to be like your personal decision. But at that point, something just happened. It's not himself. He just wants to do something. Mm. And you can't really keep somebody away with restraining other. If, what happens with restraining other is if you get to this person, we arrest you. Mm. But if I get to this person and I kill that person, you arrest me, and then you check my mental health and you see that I'm not all right. Mm. At the end of the day, nothing will be done. The dead is dead. Mm. And I mean, for somebody that flaunts his gun and videos and everything, and you know well that he's not mentally okay, I think they should just put him under maybe an house arrest or something because it's, it's a serious threat to um, security over the, um, around him. He can well, but he's shoot saying he's still and... allegedly that he's not a threat. So, <laughs> 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 like I said, it's a family issue and it's disturbing. But if I being bipolar was one of the main issues that was raised in this particular story because um, when it was on the doctor's show, um, the show where they did a test and they discovered that he was using a couple of drugs, like uh, something for Zane, I, I can't remember the full um, terminology right now, but um, they discovered that he was using about two different drugs and he checked himself into a mental health facility in 2018. And he's saying that he's improving. Now, like Ewa also said, um, he has been flaunting his guns, his gun collection and all of that. And um, the fact that he openly said that um, he has the intention of harming um, Nick's wife and the unborn child, which is um, something serious. So a restraining order, even though this is a family issue, a restraining order is just appropriate because if you have been on a show, even though you tried to say it was doctored, we all watched the show. I went back to watch the show and I saw his behavior. It was very erratic. It was very unbalanced. It was imbalanced. It was very, um, how do I put it? He had split personality and that's the basic definition of bipolar. And um, if he's saying goodbye to his brother, I think it's only right. And it's just it's not just um, Nick. Nick was from the Backstreet Boys. Aaron is an independent artist that has been making things happen in America. And Nick happens to be his elder brother, right? And um, at the end of the day, the both of them, they want to go their separate ways because you feel someone is a threat to my family. And like I always say, family is everything. You always have to look out for your family. So regardless of whether you think, oh, this person is bipolar, this person has a mental illness, whether, but the moment you bring any form of threat or shade to my family, that's the end. Whether you're my brother, whether you're my sister, whether you're my father, whether you're my mother. Do you understand? It don't matter who you be. But as long as I see you as a threat, that's the most important thing, my family, my immediate family, and protection, and making sure their safety is guaranteed. So I have nothing against Nick. All right, it's time for a quick break. But when we return, it will be time for more stories. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I they see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Baba? Right oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? Sleeping early, sleeping early.
Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Um, Genevieve is getting advice. I don't know. Of course, this is not solicited advice, but it's coming from a Nollywood actor. He says, don't lower your standard for any man. According to the actor Uche Madhu he spoke in an Instagram post. It is better to marry at old age and enjoy the union than rush into it with regret. So, well, for me, I'm going to... Um, they say take the message and forget the messenger and this is what I'm going to do. He said this <laughs> prophecy just came in now. Uh. <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> what is Uche going Uche is on? a case. Like he's been a case on social media for if a very long time. If you even go through his um, Instagram page, you'll know that he is He's always picking case. up on one person or the other, which Media's is why I'm just going to is. say, oh, just pick on the very nice ones. It's not necessarily for Jelly V because I don't think she's planning on lowering her standard for mm -hmm. any reason. I mean, I'm not Genevieve, but I I want to believe that if I she wanted to lower her standard, she would have done it since. the back of um, the... Links. Le, le. Is links a lower standard? That's I mean, probably that's why it And ends. regardless, you still have to... When you talk about standard, we all set our standard for ourselves. You mm. cannot set a standard that's for me. That's why I said probably what right? thinks. Yeah, so if you think links is not her standard, that's your problem. If she doesn't think so, then your opinion is not valid in the grand scheme of things. So, but like I said, I'm just going to forget about this coming from Uche and still talk about the fact that lowering your standard does not help because mm. at the end of the day, you end up getting bitter. Actually, if um, the person you're lowering the standard for does not even understand that you have you had to um, compromise to make the relationship work, so it's really never um, advised. Mm. I think I'm just going to do the same thing to ignore the person giving out <laughs> the advice and just take the advice. And I'm sure if Genevieve read this, he, he, everything he said in that post is actually the truth. Mm. He was being honest. I mean, he mentioned Nollywood um, actors the, and actresses. Except the prophecy part. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, he mentioned not only with actors and actresses that one of the reasons why their marriages don't last is because of the fact that at the end of the day, because they all want to rush into marriage and just so everybody will know that they are married, the old one, the ceremony thing, I know. They get to probably lower that standard, like you said. Everybody sets yeah. their standard. Mm -hmm. So standard is relative. My standard is not your standard. Mm -hmm. Like and. For Genevieve, I don't think she's somebody that would even want to lower her standard. I mean, it's Genevieve. It's nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but she knows what she wants and she knows what's good for her. I mean, mm. she's been there all these years. Mm -hmm. and I don't think Genevieve is somebody this that is really good, needs right? that advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, even though um, we say this advice is unsolicited, and um, I don't know Genevieve one on one, I don't know about her standards, but I want to believe she's human. She has blood and she has flesh, so she's like every one of us. So whether you talk about Ge Genevieve lowering a standard or not, I think this advice is actually just going out there, and it just happens that Genevieve is the subject matter in this situation because if you actually look at it the pressure on women especially when you get to a certain age to get married in this part of the world is very 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 deep a lot of parents as soon as you clock 24 25 they start telling you about or call you know those kind of things and then you don't get to actually make the right decisions at the end of the day so what you're saying about lowering your standards i think it's also about rushing into making decisions it's not about who you end up with it's also about is it am i ready for this because at the end of the day you might lower your standard over your career because your standard can be your career like let me make something out of myself being a woman let me be very successful let me do this for myself let me get this let me acquire this let me acquire that before i even settle for marriage and if for any reason because of the societal pressure you begin to think of oh i need to get married i'm going to, I'm, I'm turning 36 in two months i'm turning 37 in two months and then you think oh that's the right time to go get married to just anybody just because of um, the age factor then that's lowering your standard so it's not really about the man or the person you end up with at the end of the day it's about making the right decision when it's right for you that is the standard I believe every woman should have. I'm not a woman, but if I was a woman, I think that would be my standard, making sure I'm good before I make any decision that will affect my life permanently. Standard. <laughs> standard. <laughs> okay, this is like a whole new meaning to standard, yeah, but right. 
It's all good, like you said, you're not a woman. And I want to sing if I were a boy, but <laughs> it will not work. Anyway, I think it's time for us to go. And we had more stories, but we'll probably take them later. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my co anchors, Ewa Ritu, Anifel Luo, Shunkeye, and the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying, Thank you for watching.